name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Hi, hello. Welcome to another weekend vlog. It is past 1.30 in the morning. So I'll go to bed, but I want to start this vlog and say hey. Pop in and say hello. Please excuse all of this. It will be fixed <laughs> on the morrow. Don't you worry. I'll look better in the next clip, hopefully. See, last weekend in January, craziness. Yes, I still have my tree up. What of it? <laughs> that is coming down this weekend, I promise you. I swear. <laughs> It's coming down this weekend, all my Christmas stuff. I need to, I can't believe it's still up. It's honestly embarrassing at this point that it is still up. It's fine. This weekend is gonna be a fun one. Tomorrow I have book club with some of my friends. We're gonna be talking about Monstrilio, which I finished today, started and finished today on audiobook. My brain does not have any thoughts on this book. So I'm excited to chat with the crew to see their thoughts before I kind of like fully solidify. But like I, I gave it three and a half stars. Like it's a good book. It's beautifully written, but I don't think I liked it. <laughs> So it's fine. But yeah, three, three and a half stars for that one. But I'm going to be reading this bad boy this weekend. This is the goal. This is the aim, Locklands. And also another book that I have in my bedroom, which is where we're going to go next. I started it this week. Don't know how many pages I am into it, but it is a literary fiction. It's a Palestinian book. I didn't realize it was literary fiction. I thought it was fantasy, to be honest with y'all, but it's not. It just has ghosts in the title, <laughs> which led me to believe. I'm a fool. <laughs> that book is Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad, which is literary fiction, a very modern literary fiction. I think this came out in 2023. Uh, following some modern day, yeah, 2023, modern day life in Palestine. And apparently it's got like Shakespeare elements to it. So love that. I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, those are the two goals for said week. Wrap up some the two books that I'm currently reading, of course, and then we'll see what we get to up to uh, elsewhere, other times. I also officially have a gym membership now. She's a gym girly, and she also just got new runners because she has plantar fasciitis in one of her feet and also bad knees. <laughs> Hit me up, a single. Hey. <laughs> So I went and got new runners today and they're very cushiony. I dropped $250 on these bad boys. Very cushiony, very fun. Yeah, I have big feet. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but I'm excited because the runners that I did have were, I think what caused me to have plantar fasciitis in the first place in my one foot. So hopefully tomorrow's gym session is better <laughs> and I can walk afterwards. <laughs> Because yesterday, Thursday, I was I actually got the gym membership Thursday and went and did my first workout in my old runners. Your girl couldn't walk last night. <laughs> and she was up all night in so much pain because of the fucking runners. So hopefully these runners are much better. Anyway, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna be going. First thing when I wake up in the morning, because I wanna go to the gym and then come home and wash me hair so that's the plan and then after that i'll kind of just chill out and then go to my friend's place for book club later talk about monstrilio and then i got nothing else planned this weekend so i'm very excited to have a nothing weekend yet again recharge reset because i'm a sleepy girly okay i'm sleepy i'm tired i feel like i've hit a wall in my like energy levels and it's because january is the longest fucking month of the year but this january has gone by so goddamn fast like we're already <laughs> January 26th, is it? No, January, Saturday, Saturday. No, Friday is January 26th. Tomorrow is January 27th. How are we already at the end of January? I couldn't tell you. But yeah, simultaneously longest month of the year. And also, I am, it went by so quick. That's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. Very fun, very spicy. And yeah, I'll be reading Locklands. The goal is to finish that one up and also Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. If I can find the time to polish both of those off. I should have probably been reading one of them tonight, but it's Friday. I just never read on Friday, apparently. <laughs> Although I did read all of Montrilio today. So I did listen to all of Montrilio today. I listened to a couple hours of it at work at the end of my day. And then after my piano lesson, I came home and I finished it. So I did read today, just not. <laughs> Two of the books that I'm currently reading. Anyways, that's what's up, that's what's happening. I'm a sleepy girly, so I'm gonna go to bed. But welcome to the vlog. Welcome to the weekend. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get this started.
Saturday. Technically Sunday. Because it's uh, 1.30 in the morning, almost. I just stopped talking through my yawns. <laughs> Hi, hello. I am here. I'm about to go to bed because I'm sleepy. I'm trying to fix my night time routine a little bit and like actually go to bed when I'm feeling a little sleepy, a little just like, I could just rest my eyes. You know that feeling? I'm there right now. So, figured. Time for bed. <laughs> but hi, hello friends, how's it going? I am here. I want to pop in and give y'all a little update because uh, today's been a good day. Didn't really do a whole lot. Got up, went to the gym, got my little walkies in. Also found out that, I was about to say that I'm too tall for this machine. The machine is a little bit too small for me. Reframing our mindset here, friends. It's not us that's the problem, it's the world that's the problem. I'm very tall. If you don't, if you didn't know, if you're new here, hi, I'm six foot one and I'm plus size. And I have really bad knees, have had bad knees my entire life. So literally like when I was in grade four, I grew too fast for my knees. That like the growth plate in my knees wasn't big enough to support me. So I would just collapse at random moments. And like when I like went to go sit down, my knees would click at all times. And it was very satisfying to me because it like relieved the air that was building up in my knees. But my, my mom was like disgusted by it. And she's like, there's obviously something wrong with you. Took me to the hospital or like the clinic and like asked. And the guy was like, yeah, she's too tall for her knees. <laughs> and I've had bad knees ever since because of course I have. But yeah, <laughs> today I found out I did like a little 20 minute walkies on the treadmill, which was fun, but the treadmill that I was on kept doing that thing where when I'm walking, sometimes when I step, I like do the slide step thing. It was very subtle and it was only every so often, but it kept me on my, <laughs> on my guard when I was walking. So I didn't want to like fully just like eat shit on the treadmill. I don't know why this, this one treadmill was doing that. And then after that I went and I was like, I'm gonna try the ellipticals today because when I was younger, I loved an elliptical. At my high school, we had we had a workout room and every once in a while we were allowed to go in there and do like gym in that place instead because our gym teacher was great and it was part of the school and stuff like that. So we would just do that instead. It was like a kind of a free gym type of situation and I loved the elliptical so much. And I find specific ellipticals were better on my knees than just straight like walking was because it wasn't as like impact heavy. It was more of like a rocking situation. Anyways, and today I was like, I missed the elliptical. I wanna go stand on and work out on the elliptical a little bit. So I was like, okay, I've gotten to the point where I can feel <laughs> my knee. I can feel all of my joints in my body after walking on the treadmill for 20 minutes. I am gonna go on the elliptical. The elliptical decided that today was violence day and my knees kept hitting the bars. <laughs> because it's too small for me and I'm very tall and it was like riding a bike that's too small for you where your knees are hitting the handlebars which happens to me all the time because I need like a ginormous bike to be able to bike anywhere but <laughs> I was just like trying to like walk and also not like get too like in it because then my knees would be smashing into the machine so that only lasted about seven minutes so tomorrow when I go if I go I'm gonna see if they have any bigger ellipticals because like I'm six foot one like there's definitely men who are taller than me and potentially other women very rarely other women uh, who might have longer legs than me people people who have longer legs than me who would also find issue with these machines so maybe they have bigger ellipticals in the back somewhere i don't know anyways that was today new runners working great working so good they're so comfy love them and then i came home showered washed my hair which it desperately needed then i decided to just relax do some stuff and i got some i got a little bit of reading done i'm now officially halfway through Lockland by robert jackson bennett which is great because i was this was the goal to finish this this weekend so hopefully we'll finish that tomorrow and i also while i was doing that did a little wee bit of scrap booking so i did <laughs> this which is gonna be a little awkward but this is the cabin spread and i did a little scrapbook in I'm covering the name of our cabin because it gives where our cabin is away and I don't want to do that. It's a little creepy, isn't it? For you knowing where our cabin is. Anyways, but yeah, I like this thread a whole lot. I know my hand is covering like most of it, but he's cute. Anyways, very happy with that. Then went to my friends for a book club, which was nice and fun. We all liked Monstrilio enough. It was three and a half, three and a half, four and four stars across the board. And then one of my friends was just like, undecided on what she was gonna rate it. We got some pizza. It was a round theme. <laughs> we got some pizza. I brought a whole thing of like suckers and candy that were round, including some other like Halloween candy, but like in my head I was like suckers are round and they have like the stick. So it's like 
And then Shrilio's little like arm tail thing. <laughs> There's like rockets and stuff in there, which are like those little circular chalk candy things. I think in the States, rockets are something different. To you, they would be Smarties, because Smarties are something different for Canadians <laughs> than they are in the States. Anyways, round sugar candy things. And then my friends brought like profiteroles or cream puffs or something like the profiteroles are like round lumpy little dessert things and there was also cookies and <laughs> it was like very round very round i love it and like for an appetizer we had like round crackers and a boursin cheese which was great but yeah the conversation was lovely we had a great time and i was home by like 11 30 which is always lovely and since then i've just been hanging out no thoughts no brain but I want to go to bed. I'm a little munchy, but I literally have nothing in my house. I need to go grocery shopping again tomorrow. Would you know? It's the ever present. I have to go grocery shopping. You know, liking Lachlan's, but I'm not like super engaged in it. I don't really like this third book very much as much as the other two. I'm just not as into the story. I don't really know the point of what's going on. <laughs> so, did you hear that whistle? That was my nose. Love that. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can eat a slice of cheese or something. Oh no, I have these little like peanut butter Ritz crackers. Maybe I'll have a couple of those. So I'm a little nibbly um, and then I'm gonna go to bed. And tomorrow, Sunday, number one, grocery shopping. Number two, could take down Christmas decorations. Finally, before it's February, because I can't be that person who has their Christmas decorations up in February. Um, three, just kind of hang out and read. Finish lock lines. And maybe get some progress done on Enter Ghost as well. That was the plan. That's what's going on. <laughs> Anyways. I'll count you tomorrow for Sunday. <laughs> It is ooh, past 2 30 in the morning oh no i got a little caught up in my scrapbooking oh no <laughs> that's fine i'm going to bed now and it's still earlier than 4 a.m that's what i tell myself anyways hello i have reading news because i finished enter ghost Woo! this is also an incredible angle <laughs> today has been a good day let me sit and we'll chat. Today has been a good day. It's been very chill. There hasn't really been much going on, but I decided today to not go to the gym because every bone in my body just didn't want to go. And I know that's probably the time where you're supposed to go, but I was like, it's fine. Everything will be just fine. And it was honestly just fine. <laughs> I woke up, took it really slowly, kind of just did whatever I wanted to for a little bit, I had like a shower, just like chill. Love when my Sundays require minimum effort. That is my favorite Sunday of all time. And <laughs> so then I sat down and I started reading a little bit of Enter Ghost and I got to about like the 57% mark before I ended up heading over to mom and dad's. And mom and dad called me earlier and said like, oh, come a little early because we 
have a few things that, like I had to help mom groom Bella a little bit because our dog because <laughs> she tried to groom her a couple weeks ago and she was just like there's just weird long hair on her that like I didn't get that I need like help with which is totally valid because Bella is a Shih Tzu Maltese and she has the weirdest hair. <laughs> It's so thick and so luscious, but cutting it, it's bananas. Like it, there just is always more and it's very hard to cut evenly. So it, it helped that I was there. So we, we did that with her. She's been doing it for her, but. Something just fell in the main part of my place. And I need to know what it was because that was a little bit of an interesting sound that I've never heard before, but, but yeah. So went over early, did that. What changed? <laughs> um, what are you? Piece of shit? Probably was that. Anyways. I love when noises happen and I don't know what is the cause of the noise. Yeah, went over a little early to help mom with that and we had dinner which was delicious. And then uh, mom was like, oh, we have to go through some of your old stuffed animals because I, you know, had a crap ton of stuffies when I was a kid and <laughs> they kept a lot of them for a long time, but they're gonna get rid of some of them and they had they have a lady who's gonna come and like pick through the leftovers for her daughter, um, who's like 11. I don't know how they found this lady. My parents seem to have contacts everywhere. So we went through some of my old stuff, which was so fun. <laughs> I unearthed my Simba stuffy, which has been so lovely. I love him. <laughs> He's so cute. Unearthed him, unearthed my old Nintendo DS Lite that I thought I had sold like a decade ago. Didn't realize we had it still. Unearthed so many things. It was just such a lovely little moment because it was like all the three of us just kind of looking at stuff and deciding whether to throw things away or keep things. And it was great. It was, it was a nice little evening. Uh, then I came back here and finished Enter Ghost by Isabel Hamad. So this is a very interesting book. And I think, no, I know that so many people would eat this shit up. It's a literary fiction, very modern day literary fiction that takes a lot of inspiration from Hamlet. And it ties like a literal Shakespeare production of Hamlet into this, hence Enter Ghost being the title. And as someone who never actually studied any of Shakespeare's plays in university, I did study some in high school, but that literally doesn't count. I don't know anything or I don't really know enough about Hamlet. I get Hamlet and Macbeth mixed up all the time, but this is Hamlet for sure. It follows our main character, Sonia, as she decides to go back home and visit her sister, who's the only one of her family still living, or of her like nuclear family, still living in Haifa. She goes and there's always like, it literally starts with her being searched at the airport. And so it is very, very politically charged. Like the questions of like, why don't you have a specific passport, but yet your family does, like all this kind of stuff. And it's very interesting to have Sonia as our main character because Sonia is a theater actress, but she's not very like successful. She just kind of is in the scene. She's also very, very bland as a main character and very like head empty, no thoughts. <laughs> But she was such an interesting narrator to read from because as an actor, like when she's in these roles, that's when she really becomes herself. And there's a moment in this book where she's talking to another person, one of the other cast members, who is a really famous like Palestinian singer. And that's why he was cast because he's gonna like bring in big names. Like he's a big name Palestinian singer. And she's talking to him about it. And he's like, yeah, no, like I really like don't know. I like, I really fell in love with acting because it's like, I found myself copying other people's mannerisms and I don't know anything of my own. And she's like, yeah, 100%, that's it. And I'm like, that's very telling. That's very, very telling for this narrator who is very bland. And she's surrounded by, like bland in a way that like wasn't, it was a little boring for most of the book, to be honest with you. I wasn't really enjoying it for a lot of the time. But now that I've come to the end of it, I'm like, no, this was a fucking great book. Like it's just not my usual cup of tea, which is why I was bored because I'm not used to literary fiction. And a very important read, like honestly, this should be recommended up there with Against the Loveless World by Susan Abelhawa. Like those two, these two should be recommended at all times. And I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be recommending the hell out of this book because it just, it was so good. And if you really enjoy a really interesting look at political strife and life moments in, in Palestine and in the West Bank and in Haifa and in Ramallah and 
all this kind of stuff and all of these conversations about very modern things that are happening and it's it's centered around the moments of when in Jerusalem it was so hot and there were so many people praying just on the streets and it was becoming like a genuine health issue of having all these people out on the streets because no one was allowed in the my, my brain is only thinking mosque but like in the places to pray inside because all of these palestinians like weren't allowed or all these arab people just weren't allowed in so they had to pray on the streets and it was like people were dying because of heat stroke and stuff like it's centered around that and it's centered a lot around a lot of protests and things like that as our main character is visiting her sister in haifa and then meets one of her sister's friends and becomes very intrigued by her and I wish this had become sapphic because it was so close to being sapphic. It was so like the homoerotic connection between these two women was so charged <laughs> and I just wish it had become sapphic truly because it, it, it was it was there. It, they just never went there, you know? Uh, so it's between the two of them and then this connection, this friend, uh, which is actually an old family friend of theirs when they lived in Haifa, they they become connected in, a, in an interesting way through the theater scene and Miriam, who is the sister's friend, asks Sonia to be like a stand-in for a role in her play of, in her directorial play of Hamlet. So she goes to, to the West Bank of Ramallah. I can't remember exactly where they, I think it's just going to the West Bank where, where Miriam like does most of this play prep and <sighs> practicing and auditioning and stuff like that. And so it's, it's this very politically charged background of all of these different things happening. And like, you get it on the news, you get it just like mentioned in the streets, you get it in the conversations between the characters because the characters are just like, asking each other like how's your family and like one of Miriam's brothers is imprisoned for a number of days. It's all of that with this beautiful art happening in the middle of it and then these wonderful conversations around what the play is about. One thing that I really enjoyed that Isabella Hamad did in here was that she instead of having like the play be the dialogue and like them like rehearsing the play like you might do if you were including play stuff in your book what she did was she made the the description and the dialogue and the action actions of the people in the moments when they're practicing the play laid out like a script so it's like the characters are the people are the characters in the book so they they're not like hamlet and and ophelia and all that no they're like miriam and george and majid and faris and all these people and it's just them having conversations as they're like going through but it's in these moments of like when they're actually going through and practicing the scenes and, and it's it was very interestingly well done the whole book is not like this trust me like most of it is <laughs> regular novel um but yeah it was just it was fascinating and i wish i knew more about the play hamlet so i could have seen what like the direct ties the author was doing in the narrative and the story itself but it was so so interesting to get the conversations from the characters about like what is this play about like what are the themes about and and seeing them draw parallels to oh gosh like this being like having a really interesting conversation about like what this play is about and and Hamlet being a martyr and like the play being about martyrdom and like the play being about national liberation and it's like mirroring the fact that Hamlet is a martyr and like in the way of like a Palestinian martyr it is very interesting conversation in here about how these people are viewing the play and like they are taking Hamlet and doing a translation of Hamlet in Arabic which becomes a very interesting problem for our main character because she doesn't speak Arabic properly because it's not like it, it was her first language but it also wasn't her like completely first language she was raised half Dutch as well so she and she's been living and doing the theater scene in England in English so she knows this play back and forth in English she knows the syntax she knows the Shakespearean language but she doesn't know the correct grammar style of Arabic so that like comes across sometimes in her acting because she literally has to learn the Arabic for the moment and like the, the director Miriam is like telling her these moments like this specific scene you're like like a little like I can tell like you're having trouble with it so let's run it in English and see if you can get the feeling that way and it was just such an interesting way and a look in at the the world of actors and plays and just these moments 
of building a production with a really tiny insular cast having all like this beautiful creation of art with the backdrop of all this political stuff going on and like the ending i'm i'm like <sighs> It ends so abruptly and in a way that like I really love the way that Isabella Hamad ended it and I also absolutely hate the way that Isabella Hamad ended it because we don't get any like closure on like what happens after this big performance because like because of the because of something that happens in the middle of the of the before of the what their last performance and I'm just like <laughs> and there's just there's tension and stress and there's real life dangers. The more that I'm talking about this book, the more that I'm falling in love with it. Like it was exceptional. I need to get my hands on a copy and I need to read Hamlet and then reread this and see if I can find the parallels because this, I just, I wanna make all my friends read this too. So like friends, if you're watching this, please read this. Pick this bad boy up, do it. <laughs> you too watching, pick it up, even if, Literary fiction is not your main genre because my main genre is fantasy. I still really enjoyed this. Yes, it was slow and a little boring throughout the whole thing, but I knew going in it was going to be slower because literary fiction is always slow for me. And I was accepting of that fact. And I knew that I was going to find something wonderful in it. And I was gonna find the nuggets of, of amazingness throughout. And now that I've been talking to you for almost 20 minutes, I think you can see that I found the wonder in this. And I think because like we as a bookish community love Shakespearean stuff so much, like if we were villains is very, I think it's Shakespearean, like it's based in that kind of literary trope. People love Shakespeare retellings and, and pulling on on the, the plays that he wrote. So this is this is this is one that should be in your regular recommendation rotation for Palestinian books because this was deeply imagined and exquisite as it says on the back. I really like this. Pure dazzling, you know? It really was. Like, I think also, I was also listening to the audiobook and I think that was a little detrimental because the audiobook narrator really gave like nothing with her narration. The only time that she would give any like feeling is when she was voicing dialogue the actual like descriptive narr the descriptive narration was very flat and i think that and it was just kind of all the same monotony runny 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 of the same accent so it was just kind of uh, monotone all the way through and I, that might have lent to my monotone feeling of this but i think that it was still fantastic <laughs> it was still great so love this, yay. I did not get to finish Locklands, but I did get halfway through. Anyways, I also, I'll probably end up showing you tomorrow, but I also ended up finishing all of the planned spreads in my scrapbook. And I'm so pleased with myself. And my poor scrapbook is so, like it just, like the cover just won't close anymore. I've had to actually go in because like one of the first few pages had like torn away. And like I could see, I could like literally started pulling it apart and I could like get to the spine. I had to re-glue the spine and like reinforce and and do the, the, the front cover. So I don't know how the last half of this book is gonna go, but I'm done all the spreads that I have now. So from here on, it's just when I wanna do a spread, I will gather the photos and then get them printed and just do that spread specifically or a couple at a time. There was just a lot of backlog of spreads to do. <laughs> so, but I'm officially done them all, which is great. And I also did the spread for Enter Ghost. And now that I've talked through my feelings, I think I can actually like write a proper review for it in my bullet journal and also on Goodreads. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful time. Oh my goodness gracious. Anyways, I've been talking forever. I need to go to bed. So I will catch you tomorrow for Monday, but it's been a great day.
friends. Happy Monday. I am here. It is just after 11. I've been editing this vlog. All I gotta do is throw this clip in whenever I'm done it and then get it up for you. Oh gosh. My hair has just been a prize in this vlog the entire time. Good Lord. <laughs> I've got Simba to keep me company. A little bit of ice cream and a half of a giant cookie. I got amazing like gourmet level cookies at Sobeys yesterday. They're literally like this big and they're a lot. <laughs> so I just took half because I also wanted a little bit of ice cream and that's great because they're very sweet. So <laughs> I am going to just, once I'm done this vlog and whatever, I'm just gonna sit here and chill do nothing else for the day. But I also need to finish writing my, this is my anti ghost spread, by the way. And I also did a Australia spread. <laughs> I can't get over the, the use of that sticker. Hungry? I wrote in. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Yes, I'm so funny. Um, I should also update you on two previous books that I read. I guess I did talk about Far Sector, which is this spread here. Uh, in my last vlog, first five star of the year, and so far the only five star. And then I read a one and a half star with The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Ka. You may ask, Jen, why didn't you DNF the book? Because the audiobook was only two and a half hours long on Scribd, or like two and a half, three hours long on Scribd, like full length. And I listen to audiobooks at a stupid amount of speed, at like two and a half, three times speed. So by the time I was like, I don't really like this, it was done. So <laughs> and afterwards I was like, I had nothing going on, but I'm low key proud of the spread because of the <laughs> fork and knife that I found in a National Geographic. It was on an ad <laughs> and it was like, perfect, perfect. If you read the book, you know. And also the fork and knife would have been very apt for Monstrilio as well. It's funny that they were both back to back, but anyways, these are my reading journal spreads. I'm gonna finish writing all of my thoughts about Interghost in the corner here. And then when I get the little thumbnails printed off for the cover, the cover for Monstralia is gonna go here and the cover for Interghost is gonna go here. I realized that when I printed off the other covers that I used throughout this book, that I measured wrong in my Canva file. And so they ended up being a lot bigger than I wanted them to be because I had originally measured out in my journal here on this page. You can't see them anywhere because I glued them on glued all these things on, but in a, a few spots I've done like this, I measured out specific like cover sizes and they should be one inch wide by one and a quarter inch tall or 1.4 inches tall. That's not one and a quarter inch, 1.4 inches tall. That should be the size of them. And I, <laughs> in my brain, when I was doing the actual layout, I think what I did originally was I picked like a flyer size on canva and i had them measured perfectly but then when i went to go like translate it to print i ended up like changing the page to be eight and a half by 11 which is the standard like page size and it like just stretched everything to make it that size instead of like adding the page size i just i formatted it wrong <laughs> and i realized that so now i have a canva page ready with a bunch of little thumbnails that I can fill in as I'm going. I also have perfectly square ones for my book bingo that I'm gonna print out as well that are like the audiobook covers. Cause if you, have, if you need something for your book journals or anything that has book covers and you want them to be perfectly square, go into Google and type in like Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad audiobook cover and it'll come up with the square audible version of it so it'll work for your finger boards and stuff fun facts yeah so i printed out the thumbnails of these covers and they were just a little bit too big uh but anyways if you're interested this is what the 12 books i was recommended by friends page looks like now i left just enough room underneath so when i do read them i will add the rating <laughs> so the, the thumbnails were just a touch of a, just a touch big. Anyways, but yeah, now once I get a full page on Canva now where I am, I will have it printed through Staples and I will add more covers into my burn, my little book journal. But I am loving having this around, my friends. I'm so excited to do my like January wrap up, <laughs> which is going to go up this week, I guess, because I have like my January like spread for this and also just... I've been trying to make it easy for myself to remember what the fuck books are about because I have such a bad memory. And so I've been trying to make it easier for myself in my little summaries. And sometimes if I remember to, <laughs> I have included a like 
brief summary as part of it so that I can tell myself this is the brief summary of this book. Um, even here, like on the bottom, I put the brief summary at the bottom here for um, The Will of the Many. And like it, it's just like a sentence about what the book is about on top of all my thoughts. But then for like The Surviving Sky, for example, there are no brief summaries in here because I just had too many thoughts to get on the get on the page which is what I did and I wrote so tiny for that. But yes, that's that's kind of what I've been doing in my book journal, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to finish up Enter Ghost's spread because I feel like it's kind of very empty. I didn't do a brief summary. That's what I should do. I should do the brief summary down here of what Enter Ghost is about. But speaking of Enter Ghost, which is the only book that I actually did complete this weekend, <sighs> I gave it four stars. Ran this through Coppo, gave it four stars. I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> I've been thinking about it all day. I made a TikTok about it. I want everybody to read this book. It's so good. And like genuinely, yes, okay, I was bored for half of it, but also coming out the end of it, it was great. It was great. I think the audiobook narrator, as I said last night, was a detrimental cause to my suffering <laughs> that I was feeling when I was reading this book. But I wasn't really suffering. It was just not like super engaging or whatever which is what I usually find literary fictions to be. They're a little bit more of a slog for me to get through. So I was expecting it, but I'm glad that I finished this. And I also got halfway through Lachlan's this weekend and I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple days because today is the 29th. So I have two days left, Tuesday and Wednesday to wrap this up and include it in my January reading, which I desperately want to do because y'all know what's coming in February. It's my friends pick my TBR number seven or something crazy. I have the TBR, it's in my TBR cart here, which is just out of frame. It's in there in places. It's not Eve Brown. Those those books at the top are my romances. I have a stack of them. They're shoved haphazardly on the second and third shelf of my TBR cart, my little rolly cart here. I'm excited. I had a bunch of my friends pick the books. Three of them never answered. <laughs> so I might ask again if if they have any, if, if Tessa, Kate or, or Sarah, looks at the chat if they have any picks but i ended up actually when i was at book club for monstrilio i asked sophie's partner tamsin i was like hey babe pick me a book <laughs> to read so i have seven on that list now which is exciting because there was only six but now there's seven so i think i might it, which is an odd number than I usually do. Usually I have my friends do like three of them pick two books each. So then I have six books or there were four of them that picked and they each picked two books each. So there was eight and then I had like an extra few picked and there was 11. There was like a special edition of of, of that. So I think I might this time do like the, however many my friends pick. And they only picked one each this time because I have so many of them now that I'm just like, there's so many of them are in the chat now that I'm like one each. <laughs> Because if you each pick two, I would be reading like 14, 15 books this month. And I have not been able to read that many books in a month in a while. And also February is the shortest month. So like that would be difficult. If no one else picks any more books, I'm going to add a potential like TBR jar poll or a random number generator for like my giant TBR to make it an even number. And I'll do like pick a number between one and 157 or however many books are on my TBR. And then I'll have the number generator pick. And then that'll be like my pick put on the my friends pick my tbr anyways that's coming next month so i'm going to be reading a tbr picked by my friends for the month of february and then you guys will get that vlog in march which is very exciting but yes i need to finish up Locklands so i can get series series number seven is that number seven already or is it number six series series number six i think i think it's number six doesn't matter the next series series vlog needs to go up so i need to actually finish Locklands and do that and then february is going to be my friends pick man tbr and then i don't know what else i'm going to be reading outside of that <laughs> but i'm also hopefully going to be doing a writing vlog as well then i'm going to get back into the writing scene because i did do a little bit of writing last week i never talked about it in this vlog but i did try to get back into airmount book three every time i almost say the title of the book <laughs> And I'm keeping it secret because I want to do a fun word game with y'all when I decide to actually release it into the wild. But yes, yeah, so I have that one underway. And then today at work, one of my students didn't come. She was sick. So I had a break. I had a half hour break. And I was like, I literally, this is the worst day of my life, not actually bringing a book with me to read. I didn't bring any books with me to read to work today because I was like, I don't need it. All my kids are going to be there. I'm not I'm just going to bring it for nothing. <sighs> So of course when I don't bring a book is when I needed one. Instead, I had my phone open and I had my notes app and I was like, let's try and plot Sage's Storybook One. <laughs> I pulled a Save the Cat Beat Sheet, which I haven't used as an outlining method in years at this point. I pulled all 15 beats 
into a notes app, into my notes app, and just tried to plot as much as I could of the big beats of the story down. And I low key have a map for Sage's story book one now, which is very exciting. And then I started thinking about like how I can go into book two, because once I got to the end of book, like end of like figuring out like what the kind of like the final image was gonna be, what finale and what like big story arc was gonna end in book one, I was trying to figure out how to like stretch it into book two because I need to do some like story series plotting for Sage's story to get like book two out. Because I know how the end of book two is gonna go because of that wild idea I had when I was reading Shorefall. But yeah, I started like plotting, plotting ideas for like the big story arcs and like how, th like what things could happen in book two to like make the story like amp up a little bit and that kind of thing. Because I say a lot of shit about second books in the, in, in my life and in this, on this channel, when I'm reading a series, especially trilogies and second books usually shit the bed. So I don't want mine to shit the bed. <laughs> I want to do it very, very well. Anyways, that's the update from me and Simba and my little man here. My, my ice cream is melting and my voice is slowly dying. So <laughs> I'm gonna leave it here, my lovely friends. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you made it to the end, leave me a little ghost emoji down below for enter ghost. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in another one very soon. Stay kind and keep on reading. <laughs>